When you start making an income from your investments, of course, there's the element of tax to pay. So how do we actually know how much we should be putting by every single month and how do we actually pay that tax? Today's video, I'm going to break it all down for you, particularly of interest. If you're a brand new investor or you're thinking about investing, how is this actually going to affect you and the income and the tax you can pay in the future? Hi there, welcome back to the Mama Fur Fur channel. My name is Jennifer and let's dive into the topic of tax. Now, as an investor, you have to think about the best way to structure your portfolio or where you're investing to keep more of the money in your pocket, not so that we don't pay tax, but there's ways actually to make sure we're using it in an efficient manner. And that's what I'm going to break down for you in this video in particular. So in the UK, if you're watching specifically, a lot of this will apply to you for different regions of the UK, such as Scotland and England and Wales, Northern Ireland and Ireland have slightly different systems and I'm not going to cover them. However, the general principles still remain the same. So if you receive an income in any capacity, whether it be a nine to five job or side hustles or additional incomes, you have to pay tax accordingly. And that obviously supports us here in the UK, our health system, our education system, and all the other systems that we enjoy, such as the benefit system. Now, without tax, we simply couldn't have those luxuries. And I'm not going to deep dive down that rabbit hole of whether it's a good or a bad thing. We just know that that is part and parcel of being here in the UK. But as investors in particular, we know that we make good money, then we hope to do even better things with that and that is my whole ethos make great money invest save design life on your terms and then also give as part of that so what's the best places you can send your money to be efficient with your tax and I really think this is important as an investor or someone investing in the stock market perhaps you've had a day job just only that in the past one source of income so that tax is usually pay as you earn it's done all for you unless you've been self-employed the moment though you start to think about additional incomes side hustle investments that's when you have to enter a next level of thinking you have to really think about where are the places I can send my money in an efficient manner not to withhold tax but to allow more of the money to grow for your wealth to then do better things with it and of course as an investor we can testify to Einstein's quote that the compound interest really is the eighth wonder of the world essentially compound interest our money and time are the best things you can do for your wealth overall so how does tax and investments work a very common question in some of my comments on my videos and it's your duty in fact to make sure you are aware of all the different circumstances available to you really to make sure you're paying the appropriate level of tax but also making the most of our money that we are earning and investing and saving. So are we really making use of the full tax allowances as well that we have in the UK? So these are particular ways where actually you're allowed to have a certain earning threshold and not pay tax. And it's really key to be aware of all the different options to you so that you can use this into factor how you're actually investing your money. So really we have two main places that you can send your money as a priority and that would be the first place is a pension. So that's where you actually give up money pre-tax so it's usually from your wage directly if it's not from your wage directly the government will then give you the uplift back as if it was so if you're a basic taxpayer you would receive 20 21 percent additional on top of your donations post-tax if you're a high taxpayer then that's up to 41 percent extra money back to go towards your pension contribution now of course with a pension this is locked down it's for a certain point of time retirement income that we will use when we hit at least 57 if not later in the uk by the time we get there but it's completely locked down when you can get access to it. And that's why we don't pay tax as we put into a pension. We pay tax though when we actually withdraw as an income. Now the second place is my favourite place to send money is an investment ISA. We also have lifetime ISAs which is a way of saving for retirement or your first home. Many different flavours that you can choose from. But essentially in that allowance of ISA flavours, however many you have, you can only deposit up to £20,000 per person per tax year. Now that is a huge amount of money that if everyone took advantage of that, there'd be great benefits in their life. And the reason that's an allowance in particular that's so important, tax-free to put in and withdraw. So in theory, if you went down that route of having investment ISA as an income choice, you know that for as long as those terms exist that it's tax-free, you can put money in and not have to worry about filling out a self-assessment to actually withdraw as an income. A great benefit in the UK, particularly when we have these investment or stocks and shares ISAs as they're called. So you can actually invest your money in funds, in the stock market, whatever flavors you like to use with your investments, you can find it usually in an investment ISA. Many 
many different providers, well worth having at least these two things, an investment ISA and a pension in your name. Now, why I also love an investment ISA so much is because you can get access to it whenever. As soon as you open it up, then you have access to withdraw your money. When you start putting money in, you allow it to grow, ideally between five and 10 years if you are using the stock market. But I can decide at any age, I don't need to be 57, I don't need to be 65, I can get my money back whenever I choose. And that's why I love that form of tax efficient savings, up to £20,000 per person per year. Now, another thing to factor in, of course, with investments, there is that risk element. Your capital is at risk. I don't need to tell you that. Your money, your choices with it. I love investing because I know the rate of return is far different from a bank account. I can get rates of 8%, even 10% year on year growth based on what I'm picking. And that's something I can't achieve with having my money in the bank. Therefore, my strategy is to grow our wealth predominantly in investments that I know I'm going to leave 10, 15 years down the line. So I've got the magic of large amounts of money I can put aside, tax free, so tax efficient in my case, plus also really high year on year growth means that that money is generating more money without me having to do anything completely passive income potentially down the line 10, 15 years. And there are people, and you know it's possible to be an ISA millionaire. That effectively means that you can set an amount of money every single month, grow that over time, and you could quite easily as a normal person have over a million pounds sitting there when you retire. It's all really decided upon the year and year growth that you're receiving from your portfolio, the amount of time you're going to leave it, and the amount that you're depositing in. But as I showed in previous videos, if you're perhaps 18 to 20 watching my video right now, you just have to put away small amounts of money to retire a millionaire if you are seeing good amounts of interest every year, seven, eight percent. It really is as simple as putting away a hundred pounds or 120 pounds a month at age 18 for the rest of your working age, if you like. So the maths are very much in our favor when we're using investments, if we do it correctly. Now, another way to think about this as well, remember that different parts of the country will pay different levels of tax. So I'm based in Glasgow, hence the Scottish accent, and I actually work in different tax brackets than down in England. So I hit the tax bracket as soon as I earn about 42, 43,000 pounds, I automatically make a high tax bracket of 41%. Down in England, you have to achieve about 50,000 pounds of a salary before you're kicked into that bracket. So essentially how I manage my money might be slightly different to you. I want to certainly take advantage of the tax efficient ways of managing my money sooner when I hit into the 40s. Now the other way that you can be tax efficient is making the most of your dividend allowance. Now a dividend is when you receive a profit as part of owning a share in a company. So basically you still keep that share for as long as you have it. They give you usually a percentage back as a thank you and it could be one percent, it could be all the way up to 10% of the value of your stocks and shares. Now this year we have a £2,000 allowance per person for those dividends and we also have a capital gains allowance which is £12,000. Now effectively what that means is you could then sell up to £12,000 worth of shares a year and you don't pay tax on that amount. So for example if you had £20,000 worth as a value of your stocks right now and you paid £8,000 so the gain is £12,000 you could do that and not have to pay tax. It's really the difference between your buy price and your sale price that's like capital gains value. So as I said, up to £2,000 dividends and then capital gains of up to £12,000. Now for dividends between £2,000 and then roughly £37,500, you then fall into the lower dividend tax bracket. That is 7.5% at the moment, so much lower than if it was normal income tax. Then if it's above £37,500, up to £150,000 for your dividends, you then pay a higher bracket which is 25%. Now obviously this is subject to the time I'm making this video in April 2020 so of course bear in mind check out the current rates based on the situation when you're watching this video. Now the fourth way you can be tax efficient which a lot of people don't talk about is actually starting a side hustle and it's one of my real passions in life. Multiple incomes for everyday people like you and I and the hope is we don't need to rely not only on our day job but we can actually put lots of different ways that money's coming to us and when you have an 
avenue that is self-employed. So for example, I keep books according to my YouTube channel, my blog products, that I sell my courses. I will have normal accounts books for just that portion of my life. Now, as a result of having a business as well as my day job, which I pay tax with, I can actually use this as a way to put through expenses. So for example, I need to buy cameras, I need to buy computers, editing software, anything that allows me to run my business, I can then put as a taxable deduction. I can even put coaching and some level of training through those accounts because it's profiting my business overall. So if you're looking at being self-employed, also bear in mind there's a £1,000 in most cases allowance that you can earn without paying tax on it outside of your day job. So if you've got a day job, you're thinking about a side hustle this year, you're going to say to yourself, well, I might only make about £50, £80 this year. You're actually not even going to pay tax on that extra £1,000 overall a year. It's only when you hit that limit, then you have to pay tax according to what bracket you fall under. So for example, if you're a high tax payer in your day job, you then need to pay the high tax rate on your business. And what you would do like me is every year you submit a self-assessment for all your income overall. So I take into account my day job and my business and its expenses, and then I pay a total tax bill accordingly. So it could well be I've covered it with my day job, I've got no tax to pay on my side hustle, but make sure you have accounts kept for your side hustle where you can take advantage of perhaps some business expenses as well. Now, another thing to bear in mind, when you have this option of running a side hustle, being self-employed, you then also have the option of structuring your business certain ways. So you could actually even pay yourself a basic wage up to the tax limit as if you were paid your earn, so 12 and a half thousand pounds right now, and then pay dividends. And dividends also are a lower rate compared to normal tax. But really you have to do the maths before that's a situation, being a limited company that works in your favor. And it's roughly about when you hit the 60, 70,000 pound bracket when you're actually making really decent money with your company overall. You might wish to consider paying yourself dividends rather than a normal salary. But as always, make sure it's in your best interest to do that way. It's not necessarily a guarantee just to avoid tax. Make sure you're paying your right taxes as a business as well as your own personal tax as well. So like you, I want to be as tax efficient as I can be to keep more of the money in my hands to then send out to the places that I want as much as possible. So I always have a daily accounts book to do in my business. I pay my tax accordingly every single year. Plus also be mindful of things where I can send my money to reduce the amount of tax I'm paying. And what I will say, particularly if you're someone who has got a side hustle, you've got that element of self-employed, max out your pension contributions as you feel inspired. Certainly max out your investment ISAs, but also think about the efficient ways you can run your business to really get the most value from your money. Also in the profits you're making and then how you're dividing it out. And what I would strongly suggest, just good business practice here, make sure in your side hustle, whatever way you're doing your accounts, put aside your tax accordingly every single month. I see too many entrepreneurs, particularly at the start, they see the money coming in and they forget about that tax element. Comes around once a year, you have to pay it. Don't let it be a shock to your system. I keep all the money secure and I deviate out the tax accordingly. I know it's a fixed percentage, so I move that out every single month, so I'm not tempted to spend it. Perhaps do the same if you've got a business right now. So I hope today's video has been really useful for you. It's a very common question. How do you pay tax? How can we make sure we're using it effectively? And hopefully this video has broken down the many options available to you and really take advantage of them. These things are all here. These allowances are all here for our benefit. Make sure you're using Using them. Be as smart with your money as you can, invest, save, but also keep more of the money in your pocket if you can, whilst also doing good with it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed. Why not check out some of my other videos? Tons of videos about investing in the stock market, investment ISAs, how to open up one, pension videos. I even show you my budget for my household every single month. So lots of videos to inspire you. And as always, I've got a couple of courses if you fancy one-on-one -on -one tuition from me via video. So my first course is all about budgeting. So it's called Budget Success Bootcamp. I take you through how to do a budget even for financial freedom, something I'm hugely passionate about. And then I also have investment investing made simple. So how to start to stress-free invest in 72 hours. So I really hope they would inspire you a little bit deeper knowledge than perhaps my free content can. And as always, thank you so much for following my channel. Hit the subscribe if you're brand new, hit the like button, and I'll see you very soon.